Today, I'm going to introduce DPC++ programming for FPGAs. This lecture is a part of the DPC++ tutorial series. My name is Yan Luo, and this lecture and associate lab assignments were supported by Intel Corporation. Data Parallel C++, or DPC++, is a high-level language for data parallel programming. The language is based on modern C++, and DPC++ uses single source for heterogeneous computing architectures. It tries to offload complex computing to accelerators, such as FPGAs and GPUs. The goal is to speed up on data parallel workloads by performing analysis on algorithms and understand its parallelisms, we can do task or data decomposition. And using DPC++ programming language, we can program these parallel workloads and use um, architecture-oriented performance optimization to further improve the performance. DPC++ is an industry implementation of SQL programming language. A SQL language is a data parallel programming framework supported by multiple industry leaders. And based on SQL, there are a number of different implementations. DPC++ is the implementation of SQL by Intel Corporation. It uses LLVM and CLAM to build the foundations of the language compilers, and its DPC++ is part of the One API framework. The goal of DPC++ is to be able to program using a single language, and this program can be executed on any CPUs, you know, even uh, FPGAs and GPUs. There are other uh, SQL implementations from different vendors, such as the code play from Compute CPP, or TriSQL from Xilinx, and HipSQL uh, from, um, from University of Hedenburg. And based on the target architecture, multiple backends are in development to support these uh, SQL constructs on these different architectures. Let's look at a simple DPC++ example. So we have uh, 21 lines of code. And this code has both the main function that will be executed on the host CPU and also the kernel function that will be executed on an accelerator. It begins with includes including header files. IO stream is the typical C++ uh, standard IO uh, library and cl slash sql.htp is the header file for sql uh, declarations and then we have uh, some declaration of variables and also importantly the namespace specification by using a namespace sql we can re uh, eliminate the need of explicitly spell out this namespace in places where we use the declarations in the SQL space. For example, range here on line 8. This is an abstraction of dimensions uh, in the SQL language. And uh, we can use um, to specify the ranges of the dimensions and their, um, their upper limit on the, on the dimensions. And Line 9, we have a SQL buffer declaration. In many SQL and DPC++ programs, we use buffers to manage a chunk of data, uh, either on host or on device. And by using buffer declaration here, we declare uh, variable A, which is a buffer uh, that is a, uh, that's based on this uh, range uh, array. And the type of this buffer is integer.
And then we have a device queue. Uh, we create this queue by calling uh, SQL's queue by using queue API, and it submits a command to the command queue. Now, this is the first time we look at uh, this uh, creation of a command, also uh, what's inside this command. But essentially, this is a lambda function in the C++ terminology. By using a lambda function, we can define a function in line in the same place where we're going to use it. And this lambda function uh, can have different ways to take uh, arguments into uh, the uh, uh, function. And by using an ampersand sign, we're taking um, some, um, we're using references to the variables that we declared outside of this function. This handler h is a, a reference declaration of the uh, command itself. And in many places inside this command, we're going to use this handler h to create other associated objects, such as accessors. Now, within this lambda function, this is uh, the scope of the command. And we declare a accessor. Accessor is used to create a way to access the buffers. We already declared the buffer A, which is an integer buffer. And here we're going to declare an accessor out and associate that buffer with this handler. And in later, uh, in line 14, we'll be using this out accessor. And we'll see, see that shortly. Begin with h.parallel4, um, we are declaring a, another lambda function. And this lambda function is, in fact, the kernel function that will be executing on the device. And the first argument R is the input argument that will be passing into the lambda function. And equal sign means that we're going to pass this R by value. And since this R will be a, a range that will be um, iterated, um, and we correspondingly have a variable that will be used inside this lambda function to go through so that this variable idx can go through the ranges of values in this R. And inside this kernel lambda function, what we have here is just one single line that is going to be, we use the index, uh, we assign the value of the index to the corresponding locations of this buffer. And then we end this uh, lambda function, which is ending the uh, definition of the kernel function. And this line here, line 16, is to end the command definition and the um, lambda function from the command. The next few lines is to access the result, uh, which uh, is a, another accessor used by the host, or to access the values in this buffer A. And the last two lines are the for loop, where we will uh, use this accessor result to access the content in this buffer A and then print it out. So that's all for a very simple DPC++ example where we see all the uh, necessary components, header definition, namespace, uh, ranges and buffer de declaration, and command queue, command, and also kernel functions.